relies upon something called Snapshot, um, which looks at enrollment, which is typically at the end of October. And because of all of the issues this year with COVID and et cetera, they pushed the snapshot date uh, further into the school year and December 10th was snapshot. So based on our enrollment at that time was somewhere around 915 or 920, that determined whether or not we would receive extra funding. So we were actually over the district's projection for Carnegie. And that combined with the funding, the extra funding that we didn't receive at the beginning of the year, we've actually received now. So that totals to approximately $500,000. And uh, I have met with chairpersons of all of our departments, meaning English, math, science, social studies, foreign language, fine arts, capstone, et cetera, to see what the instructional needs are for the classroom and for the students. So we are currently working on placing those orders and actually getting those goods in, hopefully by spring break or soon afterwards. Um, I would like to submit a student survey to kind of um, put my finger on the pulse of what students would like to see, maybe enhancements to um, the, the physical uh, campus or whatever other ideas that they do have I know that many of our freshmen have actually never stepped foot on campus, so it might be a little bit difficult for them, but I, I truly do want to be in tune with student perspectives on what they would like to see included. There were a couple of projects that got the ball rolling last year, but because school was called off so abruptly prior to spring break, some things actually kind of fell by the wayside. And one of those is um, storage sheds uh, to accommodate uh, a lot of the PE equipment as well as some of our fine arts theater uh, storage items. Um, some of you know that we're pretty much at capacity when it comes to classrooms and we actually had to um, move one of our teachers out of his classroom into um, what will be his office, which is right inside or part of the, the multi-purpose room or the gym. And that's Coach Lemayne. And he was so gracious and, and willing to do so. Um, so as soon as we can move those items out of, the, uh, out of his office, so to speak, um, that's where he will be housed. And the uh, gym will also serve as his classroom. Um, concrete has been poured. We are awaiting storage sheds, which were originally ordered through Lowe's. And uh, we discovered, unfortunately, that they were coming from overseas, I think either from Dubai or Abu Dhabi. And there was a, an extreme um, setback with that delivery, like maybe eight months. So in the interim, we were able to find storage sheds through another company and those should be arriving very, very soon, very shortly. Another project uh, is the cafeteria floor. And um, we decided to, when, when we moved into the building back in 2012, that we would place the cafeteria tables along the perimeter of the gym and um, not utilize the gray area, which encompasses the basketball court, as well as the competition volleyball court. And it's a really great thing that we did because we did not realize that the legs and especially the foot of the cafeteria tables, um, they have a rubber foot on them. And so you would look at it and say, okay, well that's appropriate and it won't damage the floor. But unfortunately, the metal piece of the, the leg for the cafeteria table will actually eat through that rubber foot and it's caused several holes in the perimeter of the cafeteria floor. So um, we are looking at some replacement, either a partial replacement of the perimeter or actually a full replacement of the entire cafeteria floor. So with the funding that we have now received from the district, we can certainly handle that as well as multiple other projects. Um, some of the other things that we're looking at is both um, furniture interior to the building, adding to some of the locker areas where we have some soft seating for students um, to um, congregate and actually work together, of course, outside of 
COVID uh, restrictions once that's all over. And, um, and especially due to COVID, actually adding furniture um, to the exterior, meaning the interior courtyards and possibly even the athletic fields. Um, we held on to several wooden picnic tables and there is some sentimental value to them because they were constructed by some of our students who were obtaining their Eagle Scout uh, project or their badge. Uh, so, and it's probably mostly me uh, who has a hard time getting rid of those <laughs> because they were constructed by our students, but they're at the point now where uh, they're kind of on their last legs. So we're looking at possibly replacement of them too. Um, so some of those are some of the major, not so major um, projects that we're looking at. Um, a couple of the, well, one of the major projects is um, something that I have to bring to the SDMC so that we can have a group decision-making uh, opportunity on that. Um, and let me preface that by saying, when we moved into the building in 2012, uh, Carnegie was considered a state-of-the-art school. Uh, one of those items includes the interactive whiteboards that are in each classroom and some of the conference rooms. Well, we didn't realize at the time that there's a lifespan to the bulbs, to the projectors, uh, to the screens and what have you. And we've already replaced, I believe, um, at least three of them, if not five. Um, when the projector goes out, that is a significant cost, somewhere to the tune of around $2,000. The bulbs, aren't as uh, pricey uh, as the projectors, but still costly at about, I think, $500. If we were to buy additional bulbs um, and kept them in storage uh, and only needed them as we use them, we discovered that there's a shelf life to them, even if they're not being used. So um, last year, we looked at some smart TVs as a replacement to the interactive whiteboards. And we actually installed two of them with the help of the PTO, thank you, uh, into two of our teachers' classrooms. Um, since last year, the prices have come down. Uh, one of the concerns for the teachers is that the smart TVs that we currently have are not comparable in size to the interactive uh, whiteboards that we have. But since the prices come down, we have um, found out that there are larger smart TVs that would fit in our budget. Um, again, that would be comparable to the interactive whiteboards. And as I understand it, you know, technology changes uh, on a constant basis. These smart TVs will run circles around what we currently have. So we're very excited to look at that opportunity. And once again, I'll be presenting that possibility to our shared decision-making committee, um, not next week, but the following week. I believe we meet on Tuesday, March the 9th, if I have my dates correct. Um, so that's one of the things that I'll, I'll bring to their attention. And also some additional lighting. Um, years ago, we actually constructed um, a, a structure um, within or as part of our amphitheater, which is um, outside um, on the hill, which is close to, I guess, Genesee Street. But it's at the back of, of our theater. And, but unfortunately, we don't have lighting for that. Um, during the regular school day, not only could we use it for theater rehearsal or practice, but also teachers could use that area as an outdoor classroom. Um, but uh, in the evening, what we would like to do to have even greater use is to add lighting to that. And not just to that, but also um, lighting that will also illuminate the uh, sheds that we expect to receive within the next month or so. Um, so that'll just kind of add something to uh, our facility. And whenever we do have night functions such as international festival and uh, other observances, then again, that'll just kind of add to what we're able to do. Um, so that's it um, pretty much about the budget so far. And again, we continue to receive feedback from teachers and especially via our department chairs in regards to what they feel um, are items necessary or required or you know, even desired for instruction in the classroom. 
and um, you parents can expect that their students will receive a survey to gather their input within the next couple of weeks. Um, HISD has scheduled the parent selection for grading cycle five, uh, which will begin the, directly after spring break. Um, the selection is going to occur starting on Monday. And I believe parents have a week or possibly eight days um, to actually make their selection for instruction, meaning if they wish to, for their students to actually return to campus in person, face to face, or if they want to continue with remote learning or virtual um, with students uh, continuing to learn at home. Um, so in a snapshot, um, pretty much that's, that's all that I wrote down as my notes for the agenda. And of course, uh, I'm here to answer any questions that, that anyone has. Um, I believe I saw Maria Calzada as one of our um, attendees tonight. And I don't know if she's on the call and I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but um, thank you for Maria for sharing your time with us because I understand it's parent's birthday and I wanna give a big shout out to par uh, parent. Happy 17th birthday. I did bake you a cake and fortunately <laughs> I took a picture of it before I ate it. So I at least wanted to share this with you parent. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't sure how much I wanted to embarrass him, so I think this is going to be be it. But yes, <laughs> yes, I appreciate that. You're quite welcome. Well, we have birthdays. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, whether some schools around the district took damage during the storm? That's been on the news. Can you tell us how Carnegie's doing? Yes, thank you so much for that. Um, so HISD asked our custodial personnel to step in um, last week and at the beginning of this week to do an assessment. And administration was asked not to enter the building until we were ensured by district personnel that everything was safe. And so uh, Mr. Balderas, our lockup personnel, informed me that water was all throughout the library floor, unfortunately. In the past, we've had some issues with the restroom, which is um, interior to the library. And so I asked him to look at that and that's where he thought it was coming from. Um, but actually it wasn't. It was coming from a mechanical closet, which is outside the library, um, closer to uh, the English wing. And unfortunately that water um, went a little bit into one of the classrooms, but mostly into the library. So once we were able to get our custodial personnel in there, they tried to shampoo the carpet and, and all of that, but it was not clear water. And I just learned this yesterday when the custodial staff showed me um, the bucket, uh, which included the water that they picked up. And if I told you it was 50 shades of black, it was probably worse than that. So HSD actually shut off the water just strictly within that area. Um, yesterday they came in and they actually had to take up all of the carpet, which is in uh, squares. So. All of the library is uh, composed of carpet squares and the district will replace those squares with something uh, equivalent and something uh, obviously of equal value. I have asked facility services if our campus personnel can be a part of that decision-making when it comes to options for replacement of the carpet. So as uh, for today, I'm sorry, for tomorrow and well, tomorrow is Friday. Uh, tomorrow, we will be moving books from the, uh, the carols so that um, we can kind of help uh, prevent mold and mildew um, from uh, the books on the stacks, um, which, you know, we, we have quite a few books, but thank goodness most of our funding was put into electronic resources so that students could access um, learning and research and books not only uh, at school electronically, but also from homes. Um, so that was the major uh, issue that we have had. Um, 
the boys locker room is fine, but unfortunately the girls locker room also had a leak. So HSD maintenance has had to shut the water off in the girls locker room. Um, but uh, the boys locker room has served as uh, some warm showers, not only, well, mostly for um, some of our personnel who were able to return as of yesterday. Uh, other than that, uh, the building was intact. Um, and so again, those were the, the two major issues, the um, mechanical room, which pretty much ruined the library floors and then having to turn the water off in the girl showers. And I'd probably venture to say, we, we will probably do an assessment on some of the exterior plants that we have. I don't have an update on those just yet. Thank you. I know uh, we've heard horror stories and I, I know there are some people here who have lived through horror stories at home. Uh, and so it's, it sounds like we had, we had damage, but nothing that is going to keep the students out of the building any further. Is that fair to say? That is correct. And also the district did um, request that all employees um, and, and students kind of uh, complete a survey so we've gathered that data. Um, on Monday and Tuesday, teachers did reach out to all students within advocacy, and there were very few students that they weren't able to reach. But we did want to ensure that we were aware of any needs that are out there. And I'm sure that the district is going to pool its resources in order to address as much of the needs that not, our, our, not only our employees have, but also students as well. And I don't yet know what or when that would happen, um, but I did send that data back to our district representatives uh, as of today. Okay. And uh, I know on the, the PTO Facebook page, of course, before that happened, we were encouraging everybody to Please, if, if your family is having trouble, have had said problems because of the storm, to please reach out, especially to Carnegie's counselors, because they are the people who are best equipped to point you in the direction of help. Correct. Um, but we, we want to make sure that everybody is safe. And then if you needed to do something like borrow a dehumidifier or have people come rip ruined carpet out of your house, you can ask for help on the PTO community or the, the community Facebook group. And that's a little bit more grassroots. Thank you so much uh, PTO for that. And I've also got several emails from parents wondering what the need is um, of our faculty and other families. So um, that's one thing I just love about Carnegie and you know our Carnegie family, how um, willing people are to serve, to help, and how generous they are with their time and other resources. So thank you, everyone. Could you, I think we're, we're getting mostly close to wrapping up. Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about the incoming freshman class? How many are there? And, and this is an, a schedule that we haven't had to work with before, really. Yes, um, so it was a little bit different this year with shorter deadlines. Um, but we are extending invitations to 215 freshmen and maybe a handful of sophomores. Um, so I believe we're close to that, um, um, unbelievably, this early in the process. Um, and we anticipate that many of, or some of them are actually on the wait list for a school that they may have ranked higher than Carnegie. If you can believe that, we may not have been everybody's first choice, <laughs> but um, I know that we do have a lot of our, um, a lot of our applicants who ranked us first place, who got a seat, you know, they're thrilled. We actually have, um, we've offered seats through the electronic and random lottery to um, students who ranked the second, third, and maybe a few fourth, but no fifth. Um, so those who are on the waiting list for a higher ranked school, they may come off of our um, acceptance list, and then we can extend that opportunity to those on our wait list. And um, I don't remember the actual date. I believe it's somewhere in March where the district will suspend the wait list. So of course, we want to accept a full 215 
incoming freshmen and then a handful of, of sophomores, we get way fewer applicants for sophomore year than we do for, for the freshman year. Um, so once we actually get through the first phase of testing, which is at the beginning of April with um, English one and English two uh, star exams or end of course exams, uh, we will start the process of thinking about how do we capture uh, documentation for the summer registration? And uh, if any of our parents um, have connections with incoming students who receive the seat, we're going to try to collect that um, electronically uh, for the most part as best that we can um, so that we, we don't have too much um, interaction in person. Um, so again, that plan is, uh, will be in development uh, sometime in April. Oh, sorry, I was speaking and I was muted. Thank you very much. Welcome. Um, do you have anything else that you want to talk to us about? And I, I haven't seen the chat move very much. I guess everybody was too busy listening. Does anybody have questions for Mr. Moss? You can put it in the chat or you can electronically raise your hand by one of the little uh, over on more on the right. Okay, never mind. I'm reactions. That's it. You can raise your hand through the reactions, I think. Um, or you can just unmute yourself and ask. So three ways to ask questions. So I see a question. Uh, one more time, best place to find resources for AP. I would say your best resource is the AP teacher. Um, I do know that there are several guides available for purchase um, in bookstores. I've seen several and I think Barnes and Noble. Um, if Ms. Matsu is still on the call, she may have um, more information on that. Again, I'm not sure if she's still here. Yeah, I think she was, she talked to us, I think, more time than she had really budgeted for tonight. So I'm not surprised if, if she has dropped off. Oh. Uh, but, but Carnegie really, Carnegie makes an effort to, to teach to the test in a hopefully positive way, right? So if students are, they should be prepared just from coming to class. Exactly. We, you know, we kind of pride ourselves on being, you know, promoting school uh, students for um, college and career ready. Um, the state test, we don't worry so much about because with our focus on uh, pre-AP and AP, the STAR test is automatically going to be a part of that. Um, so yes, the, the greatest resource is the, the teacher. And if you want to inquire with the AP teacher on any kind of external resources, um, that would be uh, my recommendation. Uh, for that. I do see another question. Typically, how far on the wait list do you get? Now, this is very difficult to answer because of the way the district has set up the, the process over the last several years. Um, you know, parents used to have the option of 10 different magnet schools, and then it dropped down to five magnet and then five choice schools. And so, it has kind of um, developed uh, differently over the course of the years. So I could say several years ago, we got down into the 300s. Last year, um, we probably didn't even get half that far into the wait list. And with the deadlines being earlier this year, it's just really difficult to say how far we'll get into the wait list. I would be surprised if we get past 75 or, or even especially a hundred. Um, we would like to think that, again, the majority of our students who were randomly selected um, by the district electronically to receive a seat, um, the majority of them actually selected Carnegie as their number one choice. So if the system works appropriately, I don't see too much movement from them. But again, um, those who received the seat who ranked Carnegie second, third, or even fourth, there's a little bit um, of maneuvering 
if they were to be selected in a higher ranked school. Okay, thank you. And they, they really do change the rules every year, don't they? Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I would like to hope that things are getting better. Uh, so I'll just leave it at that, crossing fingers. <laughs> Okay, do we do we have any more questions for Mr. Moss? Or questions or questions for anybody else? Okay. Well, I can say, oh, you're welcome, everybody. Um, I, I can give a couple updates before we go. Um, something for parents to to watch for that this is fairly esoteric, but uh, PTO is thinking of changing some of their bylaws because the bylaws were written 10 years ago. Um, things have changed. The way we do things has changed, but that requires to go to a general vote. So at some point in the near future, like over the next three to six weeks, you all will get a notice to go, please read some print on the PTO website and be prepared to vote it up or down at the next meeting. So if you would actually read it, that would be nice. Um, what else? Our next meeting is not going to be the third Thursday of the month because the third Thursday will be over spring break. It will be roughly four weeks from tonight. It will be the fourth Thursday in March. And we have some update on the program. A parent who, a Carnegie parent who is a physician um, is working on putting together a group of colleagues who would be willing to talk with us about kind of the, the health and vaccination aspects of COVID as we're hopefully in the downward slide toward everybody being vaccinated, great, but what does that mean is what uh, we hope that they will be here to talk to us about. What do those do? What does that mean for our community? Um, I'm, let me check my notes and make sure that's everything. And, and Susan, um... I'm sorry, one more thing. Yes. Um, we have a tremendous loss uh, to our Carnegie family and that's because our nurse princess um, is actually moving to India. Uh, her husband received um, an offer uh, probably sometime last year, but because of COVID things were placed on hold and we were hoping that maybe the family would change their minds, but um, prior to uh, the, the winter or Mother Nature's Fury, um, that was actually uh, her last time uh, officially on campus. Um, but we certainly wish her well. And we're hoping that it's a short, maybe two year stint and she would be able to return to us. Um, administration interviewed uh, one candidate today. I've reached out to another candidate and so hopefully I'll be able to schedule uh, an interview with that person. Um, in the interim, the district has someone that they will be sending to our campus on Monday. And of course, students return on Monday. Um, so uh, in the interim, until we can actually hire a nurse, we will have someone in that capacity in the clinic to address uh, student and employee needs during that time. And I think you're muted. I was typing, so I was trying to do three things at once and I can only do two things at once. So we, we will miss Ms. Prentice very, very much. Clearly. <laughs> okay, well, it's right about eight o'clock now. Um, yes. And good night, happy birthday, Perrin. Happy birthday, anybody else who's having a birthday. And uh, next, Oh, and thank you, Mr. Moss, for a call before the meeting. So I guess that's a habit we should get into. Um, and thank you for doing that, Mr. Moss. We appreciate Sorry. it. Sorry, I, I, I didn't think about sending it last night, but I'm glad that some of you got it tonight. That's okay. Um, please, if you're available this weekend, please come and chaperone. I know they've, they've worked very hard on putting together these events for the students. And it's also a good way to observe rhinos in the wild, which we haven't been able to do for a while. So thanks very much. I hope everybody is uh, getting along okay. And the kids can come back to the building on Monday, right? All right, good night, everybody. Thank you all, have a good week. Thank you all. <laughs>